Hello Eagle fans, Chris Hooks of the NCCU Sports Network here to tell you an inspirational story of Raheem Vick, former linebacker here at North Carolina Central who has moved into the realm of coaching after a horrific injury last season against Winston-Salem State. He joins us here in the studio here at North Carolina Central. Raheem, first of all, thanks for joining us here today. No problem. Raheem, all right, let's look back at your life overall though. You started playing football when you were relatively young. What, what got you into the sport first and foremost? Uh, I was very athletic as a youngin. You know, I uh, was able to do backflips. I always was into running, racing my brothers, racing with my, you know, friends in the neighborhood. And I, my mom took me down to a uh, to a boys and girls club when I was four years old, living in Atlanta. And back then, I was more interested in the cheerleaders, believe it or not. But it was when I moved to Maryland at the age of seven when I went to the boys and girls club up there, and that's when I really got involved in playing. Now, what position did you play when you first started playing? I started out as a wide receiver. You pretty you good? Mm, I was fast. <laughs> Couldn't really catch, but I was fast. You know, I played. Well, that, that's usually the case when it comes to, to youth football. Some of the kids can't. They're not as coordinated as some, but then you can see if you're as fast and athletic, they typically succeed. Okay, you moved on, played throughout your high school career. What brought you here to North Carolina Central? Uh, to North Carolina Central, my mom wanted me to go, come to a HBCU to further my education. So it was definitely the, it was, it was the, the alumni here, you know, I knew a couple of people in my church was, you know, Eagles, they always throw their Eagles up, you know, once they found out that I was coming down here, it was just love. They told me that I'll have a great experience in the black community yeah. and I wanted to be a part of it. And we have a lot of players that have come from the Fort Washington area and I know you have some teammates that are from there and around there. Um, just talk about your career first, freshman, sophomore year here at North Carolina Central. You were going through that transition. It was very tough, but again, it, it seemed like you were one of the people that were always around and making plays and, and making a contribution. Uh, yeah, it was fun, you know, to be able to play Division One. I. I know they just coming off of, you know, back-to-back -back championships in the CIAA, and I definitely wanted to be a part of it. You know, us being Division One program now, I, I wanted to be a part of it. I had a great opportunity to come in as a freshman and, you know, actually play. You know, I played the first game of the season, did not expect it at all. We played down at Albany State. And, you know, I ended up starting the last, the last five, like the last five games of the season. I ended up, you know, working my way into a starting role, and it was just a great experience. All right, let's move on to your junior year. You stayed in that starting position, finished sixth on the team in tackles. Uh, what were you thinking heading into your senior year uh, here at North Carolina Central? Man, my senior year, going into my senior year was great. You know, I had the opportunity to really appreciate the game of football, really appreciate the off season. You know, I, that, that was the biggest thing, you know, the off season, us guys getting together during the summer and working out. You know, former running back Tony McCord, he was my workout partner. We really got after it on the field, like stressing to those guys how important, you know, it was to lift weights, to eat right, and we did all those things because we knew how important it was. You know, we uh, were on our wristbands, you know, hard work beats talent and we really believed that so we really wanted to put in the work in the off season you know to let it you know let the game be fun let the game just come to us and it really seemed like you and, and Tony were, were inspirational leaders of the team they certainly were vocal you guys were vocal to the point where people listen when you guys spoke yeah and it is just about you know building building that team camaraderie you know having the chance to, you know, speak and those guys listen, having the chance to tell guys, you know, let's get serious in the weight room and those guys respond to you, having the chance to, you know, when, when, when you have linemen, when we're doing gashers at the end of practice, having those guys, you know, dead tired and for my voice to be able to be an inspiration for him to, you know, pick it up and finish strong meant the world to me to be able to, you know, just have that voice on the team. Okay, senior season starts. Take on Johnson C. Smith, 59 nothing win. You had a pretty good ball game there, four tackles, fumble recovery, easy win. Uh, I know you had to be riding high after that one. Uh, yeah, I was just, you know, really focused on the season, ready to get things started. Uh, I played, I played, I think I played the first two quarters of that game. It was really a blowout, so I didn't really get to see the, see the field much. So I was really looking forward to the Winston game because, you know, that's in-state, you know, in-state rivalry next to a and and just being able to, you know, play against those guys, it was, it was great because I was injured the year before that. I didn't get a chance to play them. And then the fact that the game was played on September 11th, then, you know, that meant a lot to me knowing that, you know, the tragedy that happened on September 11th, I was really excited to have an opportunity to play on that date. 
Well, then that ball game, six tackles, two quarterback hurries. I mean, you were really playing well on the defensive side. At that point of the season, how did you feel like you were playing in your senior year? I was finally getting it. The pieces was finally falling, you know, falling into the puzzle. I, I felt like my, my high school self. I felt like the guy that they recruited out of high school. You know, I was running around, making plays. I wasn't doing too much thinking. I was familiar with the system. Coach Cabell's defense was, sim was simple to me then. I understood, you know, where everybody was supposed to be on the field. I was, I was just really in myself. I was coming into my own. All right. Let's talk about that day, September 11th. I know it's a day you probably will never forget. Uh, talk about what you were thinking about and, and what was going through your head uh, leading up to that game and then leading up to that play and, and leading up to, to, to the injury. Uh, this is one of those things that I'll never forget. My, my, my normal ritual before the game, you know, I listen to music, but it was a particular song that I kept repeating. It was just stuck in my head. It was uh, Rick Ross featuring Neo, I believe. And, and on the song, he's saying, we're doing it big, it's going down 9-11. And I just kept repeating that song to myself, that part to myself. It really had me, you know, ready for the game because we were playing on September 11th. And, you know, I was just really psyched. We were playing at home. It was a night game. You know, I was just really ready for that game. And when it, you know, when the game came, you know, I let it all hang out on the field, came out the tunnel. You know, everything was good. My dress game was good. I, you know, I was looking good, you know, look pretty, play pretty. Heck that was yeah. my motto. Heck so yeah. I was ready. I was definitely ready. And uh, it's crazy. Uh, not too many people know this, but during that play, I remember it like it was yesterday because uh, Coach, Coach, uh, Coach Wiggins took me out. I guess I messed up or, you know, something happened. He took me out. And I was on the sideline, mad, you know, helmet off, mad, ready to, you know, get back in. And on that play, uh, Jr. Jr. Sharp, one of the other linebackers, he uh, rolled his ankle on the play. And, you know, versus me telling the coach, you know, coach, I'm going in to get him, I seen that Jr. went down, and, you know, that was it. You know, I put my helmet on, Jr. I got you. Ran out on the field, you know, I'm ready. This is my chance to get back to show the coach that, you know, you shouldn't have took me out in the first oh, place. Yeah. So, you know, I'm ready. But all adrenaline, you know, it's third quarter, you know, I'm ready. The game is tied up 28 to 28, and I'm ready, you know. So we're in cover three, and I read that, you know, they're doing a draw play. Big running back for uh, Winston. I can't think of his name, but I know he wore number nine. Mm -hmm. Big running back. Nicholas Cooper. Okay. And uh, we were in cover three, and they did a draw play. I read the draw, you know. I come up, you know, he break through the line. I see Mark Blakeney in the trail technique. He's trailing him. He's retracing. So Mark Blakeney hit him, but he's still rolling, full head of steam. And, you know, all I could think of was hitting this guy in the mouth because, you know, he's the big guy, and that's what I wanted. You know, I was very physical on the football field. So right. we make the contact, and once I make that contact with him, that's when it felt like I, you know, burst back five yards. So that first contact, bam. Felt like I went back. That's when everything went to slow motion. Like I made that contact, boom, and I go with slow motion. It felt like five yards, honestly. And then the second contact, boom, is when I hit my head on the field turf, and that's when everything locked up. And you know, at that point, I'm thinking like, man, you know, now it's really time for the plan B because I know I'm done. Like I couldn't move anything but my eyes, Chris. So I knew at that point that you know it really was time to start thinking about plan B. I went back to boys club. I went back to I went back to my high school coaches. That's, that's, that's what came to mind because I always remember them preaching to us, you know, at seminars, you know, you always have to have a plan B. You know, everyone's not going to make it. What if you get hurt? You, you know, you risk a career and an injury, you know, and I knew at that point that this was that time. So I immediately start to think like, man, this is that time. Like, I'm really messed up. After that, they carted you off the field, took care of all that, got you to the hospital. What was the what were the next few days like for you? Uh scary. Very scary. The ride to the the ride to the hospital was scary. I couldn't move. I couldn't move nothing but my eyes. So, you know, I really had to control my breathing because it's not like I could wipe the tears from my face or wipe the snot from my nose. You know, it was you know, my mom was of course she was in the in the uh, ambulance truck with me, but it was just scary because I couldn't move. And you know, once we were in the ambulance truck I began to get movement on my, my left foot. And I remember the guys, the, the guys telling me, you know, stump on the gas, stump on the gas. He's like, you know, that was good because, you know, I wasn't paralyzed. And, you know, that was a big relief to know that, you know, I'm not paralyzed. Yeah. So that was a big relief. But once we got to the hospital, I remember it being very cold in there. And it seemed like it took them forever to, you know, see about my situation. It felt like I was in there, you know, forever. So, I, you know, I asked my mom, you know, like, mom, you know, what's going on? Why is it taking so long? Are they going to get to me? 
and she informed me that, you know, a guy in the room next to me had passed away. Wow. So that's what, you know, was taking it so long. And, you know, with that, I took that as, you know, I'm blessed. You know, calm down, be patient. You're still breathing. This man just lost his life. So, you know, things are going to be okay. So from there, we went. I stayed in Duke Hospital for two weeks. It was two weeks. And, you know, that experience was, it was tough because I couldn't move, you know. I still didn't, you know, they was telling me that I would eventually get the feeling back into my hands and be able to move, but I, I couldn't move. I was, I was stuck in the bed for two weeks and, you know, having to, you know, have my mom feed me, you know, drink, you know, hold the straw for me. If I wanted to use the phone, someone had to hold the phone to my ear. It was just tough. It was a tough experience. And I was, I was getting, I'm not going to lie, I was getting frustrated because not being able to move on your own is, you know, it's tough. And what, once you come from doing all those things on a daily basis, it's tough. What, what were your, your mother, what was your mother saying to you? What were some of the doctors saying to you as you were going through that? Uh, it was just telling me, my mom was very positive. She was telling me, you know, it's going to be okay. You know, continue to pray. We had prayer every day. She prayed over it. Uh, and it was just, it was just, you know, my family came down, my brothers, my brothers came down throughout that experience when I was in the hospital. You know, the family, it was very family oriented. They were there for me the whole time. So I didn't really have that much time to get down because my families are comedians. They're funny, so you know, I, I it, it was okay. It worked out. During that time in the hospital, when did you realize? And you mentioned this before, but when did you realize fully, like, all right, my football career is done? See, that's the funny thing about it, Chris. I didn't. When I was in the hospital, I I had all intentions of coming back next season. All intentions. You can uh, ask our quarterback, uh, Jay Reed. He, he wrote a very inspirational story on one of his blogs, and he listed on his blog that, you know, I was coming back to play another year. And I was, ver I was really looking forward to it. I, uh, a lot of people said that I was crazy, and a lot of doctors looked at me sideways when I told them that, you know, yeah, yeah I, I have a medical red shirt. I only played the first two games. I have a medical red shirt. I'm coming back, you know. And they looked at me sideways, but I didn't let that get to me. I've been told, you know, I, I've reached adversity my whole life, so I realized that, you know, it wasn't, it was just a stepping stone. I realized that, you know, this, will, this too shall pass. I will get over it. I will, you know, recover, just have a better summer than I did before. And, you know, I'll be able to rehab and get back into the swing of things. And that was just my mindset, you know, going into it. Well, let's talk about that, the rehab. What did that entail? Okay, the rehab, I was an inpatient at Duke for two weeks after the injury. They, uh, they switched me over to Durham Regional where I was an inpatient there for six weeks. Yeah, about six weeks I was at Durham Regional and the rehab was, it was tough because like I said, I couldn't walk, I couldn't move at all when I was at Duke. But when I, once I got to Durham Regional is where I began to, you know, move my hands, have movement in my hands, and have movement in my legs. And I had an occupational therapist and I had a physical therapist that came to see me every day. PT, wake me up at about eight o'clock in the morning you know, just practicing, helping me get out of bed, helping me put my clothes on. And then that's from there, that's when we began to walk. And that was, you know, it was tough. I had to learn how to walk again. And, you know, through that process, just walking around, walking circles around the lobby, you know, in the hospital, it was tough because, you know, I'm coming from an athlete where I, you know, I could run, you know, I could run, I lift weights, I hit people to, you know, learning how to walk again, learning how to use my hands again, learning how to brush my teeth learning how to, you know, not tie my shoe, but put on a shoe. Not even put on my shoe, put on my sock. Learning how to pull my pants up. You know, it was, it was a tough process, you know, that I had to go through. But I kept fighting because I knew that, you know, deep down inside that, you know, I really wanted to play football again. That was my dreams. You know, I wanted to play in the National Football League. That was my dreams. That was my goal in life to get there. And, you know, I wasn't going to let an injury. I, I really didn't know how serious the injury was, Chris, to tell you the truth, until other people was like, man the feedback of other people when I told them that I was going to try and play again. And just, just to hear people say, man, you, you know, you really could have been paralyzed from this situation. And, you know, here it is that you're walking now. It was just tough. You know, the rehab process was very tough. You know, being in there with the elderly people, you know, people 70 plus, and we're doing the same workouts, you know, it was tough. My, uh, my left hand wasn't as strong as my right hand. You know, I had to, uh, they have the bike where you, you know, put your hands on the bike. My left hand was so weak, we had to wrap an ace bandage around the machine to keep my left hand on it, to, you know, so I could pedal to get my strength back. And the whole time I was, you know, seated, uh, seated machines. I was riding the bike, sitting down just to get the strength in my legs. It was just, you know, everything, Chris. Uh, starting from a baby, like I had to 
rehab for me was picking up pennies. You know, picking up pennies was rehab for me. Putting a key in the door, twisting it, you know, that was rehab for me. Uh, pouring water into cups, you know, that was rehab for me. So it was tough. Now, did, did, didn't you have to have some surgeries of some sort from, from then to now? I, I, has that been a process? Yeah. Uh, so after, after I was an inpatient at, after I was an inpatient in uh, Durham Regional, rehab was good. I, I went to Lennox Baker for some more rehab. I was an outpatient there. And it wasn't until July of the next year okay. I had the surgery because my range of motion wasn't that good. Once they did the x-rays and the MRIs, MRIs, my range of motion wasn't that good. I didn't have that much range of motion. So the more flexible I got, that's when they were able to see that I had a spacing in my vertebrae. At first they couldn't see that, but once I had, you know, that full range of motion where I could lift my head up and, you know, they could really see what was going on inside there, they realized that I had a spacing in my vertebrae and it was causing my spinal cord to shift. So what they, so that, that day when I went and met with that doctor, he sat there and he told me, you know, you have spacing in your vertebrae and it, either one or two things could happen. You can play football and risk being paralyzed for the rest of your life or you can have surgery. And once you have this surgery, you'll be done as far as contact sports. You know, as far as anything with contact, you'll be done because, you know, the surgery, it'll fuse the bones together. You won't have that space in your spinal cord to be stable. But, you know, that contact will end up, you know, having you paralyzed. Oh, yeah. So that's, that, that day is when I really had to, you know, make a decision. Well, you made that decision. Coach Frazier got the opportunity to be a student coach this year. Um, and, and I think if there's anyone uh, that I've seen here at North Carolina Central that could have any potential of being a coach, I certainly think, and, and think about you, you're, you're a very passionate individual, and it has been great to watch you in that role. What was it like for you making that transition to coach, though? Believe it or not, Chris, it was fun. You know, it was very, like emo it. It was very emotional, you know, because a lot of the guys – responded to me well on the team. A lot of those guys expected me to come back. So it was very emotional, you know, letting them know that, you know, I'm not coming back. My career is over. You know, I am done. That was my last game in the North Carolina Central University uniform. You know, that part was tough, but it became fun when, you know, to hear those guys call me coach. You know, a lot of guys call me Vic. I played with these guys, but for, for them to, you know, for, to hear them call me coach, to hear David Ingram call me coach, we graduated together. For, for, to hear him call me coach, you know, meant a lot to me. And that's when I knew that, you know, things were changing. This was my calling, you know. I realized that, I realized that uh, me being an athlete, you know, me going to the NFL wasn't my calling. I realized, you know, my talent on the football field wasn't my biggest, you know, my biggest gift from God. I realized that, you know, my voice, you know, my voice, me, me being able to speak, me being able to, relay my message to others is my calling and that is my gift and you know I, I appreciate it you know I thank God that for that opportunity for waking me up for you know giving me the opportunity to really realize what my calling in life was. Well I tell you what just in watching you play watching you carry yourself on the field your words mean something when, when you when you yell them out so I you can certainly know that the players uh, since that as well. All right you talked about graduation that day December 10th 2011 um, graduating here from North Carolina Central, what did that mean to you? All right. First of all, it was, a, it was a blessing. I was the first in my family to do it on both sides, my mom and my dad's side of the family. I was the first person to graduate from college. So that, just, that, just that part right there meant a lot to me. So going into the graduation, man, I was just, you know, truly blessed. It was a blessing. I did it. You know, I really did bruise my spinal cord. I really did you know, go through surgery. You know, I really did rehab for six weeks. I really did, you know, wear a Miami J collar for, you know, two months. Like, I really had to sleep on my back all that time. Like, you know, I, I really made it through. I really overcome it. Now I'm, here it is that I'm graduating with a mass communications degree. You know, it meant a lot to me. You know, that's why uh, when I walked across the stage, the first thing I did was I nailed down and gave thanks, you know, to my God because I, it, it lets me know that, you know, all things are, you know, possible. You can't do all things through Christ who strengthens you and that, you know, he's real. And that really meant a lot to me for me to be able to, you know, walk across that stage with a degree knowing that I'm going to bigger and better things. It meant the world to me. 
Well, you talk about bigger and better things, Raheem. What are your plans for the future? Uh, for, for the future, I'm planning on, you know, starting grad school this semester and, you know, pursuing the coach, pursuing my career as a coach, as a football coach, and, you know, just getting all the education that I can now. You know, I'm, I want to get my master's in, you know, educational technology. And with that, I plan on being able to help coaches or help teachers or help, you know, whoever, who, whoever it is that's in a position to teach kids. I, I hope, hopefully, I'll be able to gain the knowledge with technology and show them that there, there is different ways that you can relay your message to the kids. Well, I'll tell you what, Rakeem, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you here today. You've inspired me and hopefully you've inspired uh, the Eagle fans that are watching this video uh, on our website. Thanks for your time, buddy. Okay, no problem, Chris. That's Rakeem Vick, a truly inspirational story here at North Carolina Central. We hope you enjoyed it. So long, everybody.